to what extent can we make progress in our well-being and stay there? And to what extent do we need to keep working on it? So the idea of developing well-being can be thought of as a verb. In other words, as an active process, as, as a doing process, not something that's just uh, static, something that we do need to keep doing. And the example here might be balancing. You balance while you walk and you keep balancing. There's never really a point, no matter how developed your, your practice of walking gets, there's never really a point where you give up on balancing. You've got to keep doing it. However, that being said, you can see in that example that while that might be quite conscious at first and it might be quite effortful at first and there might be, when you're learning to walk, slips and falls and it mightn't always go well, at the same time, it doesn't take terribly long uh, in terms of the length of a lifetime when you're practicing your walking to start to find that balance once you have the, the, the core muscle tone that's needed, which typically comes from things before it like crawling. And when you learn to walk then, you develop it essentially as a habit. It's something automated. It's something that you're capable of doing. So it doesn't require an awful lot of conscious attention. There's a kind of an unconscious competence then in the way you do it and in the way you keep doing it. So that I think is the quick answer to that question. Does it require maintenance? Yes. However, the very act of maintaining it can be something that can be rather habitual. So it's not necessarily the case that we need to you know, keep worrying about it. Uh, we can actually maintain ourselves reasonably well. Another example might be something like eating. So, you know, do you stay nourished after you eat? Well, no, you're, you're going to need to keep eating. That's, that's a kind of an ongoing process of maintenance that's needed. Uh, but even though we never make the act of eating or shopping for food or going to restaurants invisible, we're still conscious of doing it. At the same time, we've integrated it so well into our life that it, we don't tend to think of it as a sort of an extra burden outside of life itself. You know, this annoying thing that we get to fix and then get back to living, but we see it as part of living. And then, of course, enjoying eating is part of that too. So well-being practices, yeah, I like to think should be something like that because that's what makes them sustainable. If it is this idea of just trying to fix something and then getting back to life, then we're probably not incorporating them as part of our day-to-day our -day habits. And then it's less likely that we're going to benefit from them as much. Now, it does depend on what we're working with here because it's definitely true that there's going to be maybe key work that we do, which involves doing a number of sessions of therapy or a particular process or a course or a program where you know, we do some core work and then we have resolved certain things. We've done some conditioning work. We've done some work belief systems, but whatever it might be, we've brought about some healing and some resolution. And then we are in a place to not need to necessarily revisit that at least consciously that often but to kind of get on with day-to-day -day living so th that definitely is the case but in practice even with that kind of work which is more kind of one-off work even then there usually are core takeaways from it that you're going to want to practice in a day-to-day -day sense and again that's not uh, an austerity it's not a, a big challenge it's just more the case that you have all of this insight and learning from the work you've done. So why wouldn't you put it into practice in a day-to-day -day sense? You know, that's what we do as human beings, as we learn, as we grow, we implement some of that learning and uh, we, we, we get better at using it. So upgrading is a nice way to think about this. Um, you know, you've got, got, you've got some practice every day anyway that you're engaged in. You know, there's some degree of maintaining your body, of managing thoughts, of working with all of this. But how effective is your methodology? That's the question. So if you see it as something you're already doing, then it's not this idea of, oh, here's all this extra stuff I have to do. You realize I'm already doing it in, in some shape or form. So it's just a question of then optimizing it to make sure it is as effective as, as it can be. So you don't need to unlearn using fax machines. Instead, you get a computer and you get email and then you probably don't send as many faxes. So likewise, a lot of the patterns that we have 
are things that can be upgraded over time if you find better and more efficient ways of approaching things. So don't, uh, I don't, don't think we need to see well-being and the maintenance of it as a chore. It is really part of the joy of being alive, of recognizing the body you have, using it and developing it, recognizing your mental capacities, your creativity, your imagination, the emotional capacities that you have. And, and why wouldn't you want to stretch that and practice uh, using it in a day-to-day -day sense? And then, of course, the other thing you're going to achieve by having a good, regular well-being process, whatever that might mean. There's many ways of achieving it, but having any process is a great starting point because you're going to then notice ways of refining it and developing it as you go. So that's good. But what that can achieve, uh, apart from solving problems, is it can immunize you from any number of other problems that you would have had, but now you won't because you're just putting yourself in that good place. A bit like eating healthily. You know, you don't get to see all of the problems that never happened, that would have happened if you hadn't have been eating well. You just hopefully enjoy eating well, you feel healthy, but a lot of the benefits are kind of invisible because you just get on with the act of living. So these are the kind of shifts uh, that can happen. And then, of course, there's just general improvements in productivity and wellness, which may not be fixing something that's broken in any sense, but they are just nice and they're to be welcomed, you know, wherever possible. If you found this valuable, do like, subscribe, and share. And what's your experience? Do you have any questions or topic suggestions? You can contribute in the comments, on social media using hashtag BodyMindSelf, or on JFL.com.